the 80s. A decade filled with some of arguably the best music and film as well. You had films like Rambo, Rocky, Robocop, Terminator, Running Man, Karate Kid, but there's some little little treasures in there too. I, was a Super Mario Bros. movie? Did that come out in the 80s? The fucking scary weird one? I don't know. It's still, it's just, it's got such great quirks and, and looks and uh, feel. But um, there's one that's not too well talked about. And it's like a karate kid, but if guitars were involved. It's called Crossroads. Not the Britney Spears one. It's actually kind of like hard to look up because I don't think it did too well in the box offices. But uh, this one came out in 1986. Like I said, it's basically Karate Kid, but with guitars. And it's even starring uh, the the same the same guy, the Karate Kid. The What's his name in the Karate Kid? Ralph Maggiato? I don't fucking know. Daniel something in, in real life? Daniel son? Ralph uh, Ma- Ma- Macchio, I had it right, I think. I had it sort of right. He was he was the main antagonist and bully. Not Johnny Lawrence. Johnny Lawrence was the hero in Karate Kid. The I'm talking about Daniel's son. He's, uh, he stars in this movie. I, w- I don't remember why I was thinking about this movie. Like I said, it didn't, I don't think it did that well. I can look up the stats of how well it did, but it did poor enough for it to be on YouTube for free and um, uh, Tubi for free with ads. So the only reason why I know about this film is because at like the last scene, spoiler, I mean, it's uh, in, like a, a 40 year old film at this point, but the last scene has um, Steve Vai, he, he's in character, I forget his name, like Jack something in the movie, uh, dueling guitars with the Karate Kid at the end and the, the lick that the Karate Kid is playing is actually written by Steve Vai and like you can even tell like his hands aren't even really playing it but like it's, it's like dueling himself technically I don't know but like it's such a badass like little cool Paganini classical lick so yeah I would go back and like watch it just for that scene because they're like kind of like do like a back and forth battle and stuff then they finish it with that badass fucking Steve Vai lick at the end and then uh, I decided to go watch the whole movie the first time I watched it it was okay I I didn't think it was all that bad but I might be biased because I like really dig um the folklore and the music aspect of it and then just the other day i was feeling like watching it i don't remember why like i just crossed my mind and i watched it i was like okay it's not as bad as i remember but it's also still like not that good so i wanted to talk about it today your boy just got back from the horse track i've been a little bit of a degenerate today did some some gambling and drinking so let's jump into it so it starts out, the bully from Karate Kid, the Daniel Sun guy, he um, is obsessed with Robert Johnson for some reason, and blues, he really likes blues. And um, there's a, an old folklore legend about Robert Johnson that you might be familiar, like uh, Eric Clapton covers this song called The Crossroads. It was originally a Robert Johnson song about him going down to the crossroads to sell his soul to the devil to be able to be a famous musician and and be the best guitar player ever. Um, uh, Whether it's true or not, I'm just gonna say no, because I'm probably gonna get a lot of heat for this. I think Robert Johnson sucks, absolutely sucks. uh, Pause right now, go listen to his version of Crossroads and tell me that it just doesn't sound like whiny sh**. Like, yeah, you gotta discredit the uh, recordings back then. They're not the best of qualities like they are now and stuff. It's still, god damn, it's, it's out of key. It just doesn't sound good. So I never understood why this guy got as much credit. And I really think it's because he just went around saying that and built, built himself up and people were like, oh my gosh. Because the original story, which what I really like that they tie into this as well later on is um, Paganini. That, that all started the uh, whole, if you're like super good at an instrument, it must be because you're possessed by the devil. That started with a violinist named Paganini. He was so good that it was scary. Like people couldn't even transcribe and reproduce what he did. And he was very tall, very lanky, wore all black. Turns out he suffered from a disease called like a uh, Malfoy syndrome, or I'm probably not saying that right, to where his extremities like his fingers were a lot longer than the average finger and like kind of double jointed in every finger so he's able to hit notes that other people couldn't and his dad would abuse him like he would make him practice for 14 hours a day before he was allowed to like eat a meal and like basically keep him trapped to make him this prodigy 
So I think a little bit of those two mixed together might be why he was like so insanely good and not actually possessed by the devil. But he still played into it in concerts and stuff. He would try to freak the crowd out and do, I don't know, he's such an amazing guy. Go, go just read his biography. He's like the original rock star. He had a really bad gambling addiction and, uh, <laughs> dude, maybe I shouldn't go to the horse track anymore. But anyways, he's trying to track down this lost song. Like, apparently, Robert Johnson and, like, his crew was recording 30 songs or something like that. There was only 29 out and available. One of them's missing. That's kind of, like, the premise of the story. He finds this retirement home of the harmonica player. Um, what's his name? Blind Willie? Something like that. And, um, I'm so bad with names. Finds him in this retirement home, and the guy's like, that's not me. Fuck off. I don't want any visitors. So he gets a job as a janitor there and keeps harassing the man. His name's uh, Blind Dog Fulton or something like that. Blind Dog Willie Brown Fulton. I don't, I don't remember. And the guy's like, please leave me alone. I don't want to talk to anybody. I just want to be left alone. And no visitation allowed. And then still harasses him. And then goes to the library and like finds a picture and is like, see, I told you, I knew it was you. And he's like, all right, yeah, you caught me. But also, while he's doing all this, he's going to a Juilliard School of Music, and he's like an amazing classical guitar player, like really good. And then he'll throw in a little blues at the end, and his teacher's like, that's not music. What is that rubbish? This is Juilliard. It sounds like he's already a pretty fucking solid player. He doesn't need to track these people down to teach. I don't know. So he... He wants um, Blind Dog to show him how to play the missing track so that he can be famous and be the next Robert Johnson, basically. So he has to convince Blind Dog, like, he's basically like, you don't know nothing about blues, like, leave me alone. He's like, no, I swear I do. I'm, like, the biggest fan. He brings in his acoustic and plays a little for him. He's like, see, I can play the blues. Then Blind Dog's like, okay, you know what? Yeah, you're right. Bust me out of here. Let's let's go. I'll teach you that missing song that you're looking for. He's like, all right, cool. And he pulls like a, uh, like a Willy Wonka or one of the grandparents from Willy Wonka. He's like, ha ha, I could actually walk the whole time. I didn't need to be in this wheelchair. Ha ha. So he busts him out. There's a little bit of like a, like a little bit of a chase. It's like security guards chasing them. They, they take some buses. He's like, we got to go down to uh, Mississippi where it all started. They happen to like bus and like hitchhike and, uh, he teaches him how to hobo and whatnot and scrounge up money. And along the way, he's just basically calling him out. He's like, you don't know nothing about the blues. You don't know a hard thing in your life at all. He's like, you're wearing a Rolex and playing a Martin guitar. Uh, uh, it. It's just, uh... He's like, where are you even from? He's like, oh, I'm, I'm, I'm from upstate New York, and I go to Juilliard, blah, blah, blah. I do know the blues. He's like, you don't know nothing about the blues. So he's basically the, the Mr. Miyagi, but like a, a southern blues Mr. Miyagi for this, uh, for this version of the Karate Kid, the, the guitar version of the Karate Kid. They go on these adventures. He teaches him about hoboing. That's like how he learned how to play harmonica super well. He shows him, and I remember an interview with Stevie Ray Vaughan even talking about this, about Texas blues. He shows him to listen to the train tracks and the rhythm with the train tracks, and he's able to like kind of strum and learn a little bit of that stuff. And along the way, he's like picking up this stuff, but not realizing that he's picking it up. Kind of like a wax on, wax off situation, just like the Karate Kid. I'm telling you, this is the guitar version of the Karate Kid. They go to a pawn shop. He trades in his Rolex and his guitar for a, a Telecaster and a gun, just in case they run into trouble. Hoboing, he's got to teach him how to hobo. You can't, you can't play the blues if you're not a hobo. You, you, you got to learn hoboing and 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 trains before you know how to play the blues. But further down the line, they find this like uh, abandoned house that's raining. They're just trying to get dry, and then there's just some chick and they're changing, and they're like, oh hey, and she's like, oh hi two random strangers what's up and they're like nothing i'm so-and-so this so-and-so and then she's like well i'm hoboing as well i'm uh, gonna get off now i'm gonna leave and they're like uh we have a way better chance of getting picked up in a truck or like a random car ride hitchhiking with her than we do by ourselves so they all just start kind of hitchhiking together and then there's a scene where they're they hit this one town and uh they're getting more down south so then the owner of this club also owns some motels, and he uses a very weird racial slur I've never even heard before. So keep that in mind watching this. It came from 
a different time. And then that same guy, he's like kind of like gives you that sleazy vibe, tries to hook up with the chick. And I'm not 100% sure how old she is either. I don't know. It made me feel very uncomfortable. But uh, they end up uh, beating him up and mugging him and um, stealing his car for a little bit just to get to the next town. Uh, I guess well-deserved on that. Yeah. I, I don't know. That, that whole part made me feel kind of uncomfortable like i said it, it just comes with the territory of these old 80s movies a little little racism a little uh underage weird stuff and a little mugging a guy hey it's the 80s and then they wind up in a a barn and um the the karate kid hooks up with the chick and then the next morning like the cops come and they're like oh well 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 what do we got here huh? you two love birds huh and then basically like steal whatever cash and and shit that they have on them so they're kind of like back to square one they're also like uh doubting uh but blind dog willy of if he's even the true blind dog willy or not and stuff until they start hitting up other places like the closer and closer they get he's they're like oh where is this legendary crossroads you keep talking about i've never like nobody even seems to know what it is and then you know they're, they're like checking to a motel or something like crap them crossroads you don't want to go down there them crossroads they're number bad news yep i know where i know about them crossroads you don't want to go down there with that blind dog willy <sighs> So they continue their journey, and then they they hit this other town to where they need to make a little cash because those those uh, police officers just basically were like, "Hey, we're gonna let you go, but we're taking all your money." And um, Blind Dog Willie's like, "Hey, I know this part of town. Basically, here's the road. This side is the bars for white people, and then this side is the bars for black people. Y'all go in there, try to play some music and make some money. I'm gonna go in here and try to do the same." So they try to go in there fail that that chick immediately starts pickpocketing men and they're like what the fuck and then the the karate kid is like well let me play guitar and it'll be all okay and they're like no fuck you get out of here and he's like well i have a gun and they're like we all have guns give me your gun and get out of here and then they go into the other side of the street where whites aren't very welcome over there but they're like, hey, blind dog, we, we got our guns stolen and our money stolen stuff again. And he's like, ah, oh, shit. And then they're getting like a bunch of weird looks. So he has to come in and kind of save the day and get them up on stage. And also he's like trying to mac up this one chick. And she's like, you're not blind dog, Willie, whatever. Then he gets up there and starts playing harmonica. And they're like, oh, shit, that really is him. And then, they, uh, I don't know, they just put on like a little bit of a show. I don't know, do well, sell the place out. And then uh, the the Karate Kid guy is just through the moon. He's like, oh my gosh, I was just like Robert Johnson up there. And the Mr. Miyagi uh, Blind Dog Wheelie guy is like, no, you were not. That was all me. You could like, you have so much further to come. He's like, no, I, I know the blues now. He's like, no, you don't. And like, th it, it, like I said, it's like kind of like Mr. Miyagi teaching the wax on wax off. Like he's just slowly teaching him these lessons, but he feels like this is all foolish. <laughs> Throws a little temper tantrum, like like just like Karate Kid. And he's like, you're not even Blind Dog Willie. I'm just doing chores. And it, it's, it's Karate Kid with guitars. And then that night, they end up drinking a little and going to bed to celebrate. And then of course the chick is like, you know, I gotta up and leave, but I don't wanna tell him and like break his heart or whatever, so I'm just I'm just gonna leave. And Blind Dog Wheelie's like, all right, yeah, here's a hundred bucks. Be safe, be on your way, I understand. Then the next morning, uh, the Karate Kid guy, I don't even remember his name in this movie, I just keep saying Karate Kid. He wakes up and he's like, oh my gosh, where's uh... I don't remember her name either. I like just watched this the other day. But he's like, where is she? And then Blind Dog Wheelie's like, hey, the road's a tough place. Hoes come and go. I don't, uh, girl, girls come and go. I don't know what to tell you. So he's like heartbroken. And they kind of have like a, uh, a little bit of a bonding moment to where he's like, if you're going to, you know, try to be a blues man or be a man, whatnot. Because I think he's 17 in this movie. Maybe the chick is too. I don't fucking know. But he uh, gives him a shot and is like, you know, here, start drinking some straight whiskey if you if you want to know what blues is. And then he uh, starts just drinking some whiskey and playing his guitar and starts playing some blues. So it's like oh, progressing, you're coming along, the wax on, wax off thing. Like you're, you're starting to learn karate. I mean, guitar, I mean, whatever. Also, they went into a lot of places. I'm just now realizing they went into like a lot of like random bars and stuff and like got served alcohol. Did nobody like ID people back in the, in the 80s? When did the limit change to 21? That would have been like late 80s, right? So I guess I guess if the limit was like 18, they're not, I don't know. I don't, I don't feel like looking that up. I don't care that much. But a lot of people just let 
these like 17 year olds just get away with whatever is what I'm trying to say. And it's looking back, it's kind of weird. Um, I don't remember what happens. He, he's all upset about the girl. They're like drinking and crying and playing the blues. And it's like, okay, now you've learned the blues. And then Blind Dog Willie also made a deal with the devil, I guess, or this devil figure guy. He's, he's, he looks like a, a businessman, like with one of those model lady, like a uh, fedora hat things. And is uh, basically like, you didn't fulfill your part of the deal. The deal's off. I want my soul back. And he's like, nah, deal's a deal. Doesn't matter. Like, you didn't read the fine print. I don't know. Some bullshit like that. So the, the karate kid is like, okay, well, what if I put my soul in place instead of his and then y'all's contract is off? And they're like, you know what? We uh, we just recruited this this new guy. I guess this new guy sold his soul to the devil. He's played by Steve I, uh, Jack something. I don't remember. Hang on. Jack Butler. So he's like the 80s shredder version of like this dude who like sold his soul to the devil to like be that great. Then they have to go to like this... Uh, this guitar off this guitar duel and basically if uh the karate kid wins that guitar duel he uh they tear up blind dog willie's contract so that he's freed now from it because it's like coming to his nightmares and stuff he's he's getting up there he's pretty old he was in a retirement home and stuff so he's like look any day's coming and i gotta uh, pay pay my debts so they're like okay so they do a duel off it's pretty cool so far it's very like bluesy and stuff uh steve i's got his uh his floyd rose and like wailing on it and then the the karate kid guitar karate kid is trying to be more traditional to where he's just using a telecaster and using like a slide instead of like a whammy bar and <laughs> some of this stuff is like there's no way that you could get that sound from there like maybe steve i recorded with it but i mean that's steve Vai. of course he can get that sound from from a telecaster and then so whenever you think the duel is over and jack butler just won uh the the karate Karate Kid busts out this bitch in classical arpeggio sequence and then busts right into a rendition of The Fifth Caprice by Niccolo Paganini, which is what he played earlier in the film whenever he was at Juilliard, like on his classical guitar, and then threw, try to throw blues into it, and they're like, no. Nah. And then, so it's funny that he spent all this time trying to be a blues man, but ends up using what he learned from Juilliard to defeat the the other guy because then the other guy tries to reproduce and replay what he just played he's like oh my gosh uh, 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 i just can't i just can't fucking do it dude oh my god how are you how are you playing but i mean it's steve Vai. of course he could play it, it but it, it's acting and stuff steve Vai is the one who recorded it anyways and the the karate kid is just pretending like he's playing it which is one thing that bothers me because i can tell like whenever I'm watching a movie of like a, a guitar player documentary or like a movie like this to where the guy um, that's acting out the guitar player that can't actually play, you can tell that their hands aren't really hitting some of the notes and they're just like going like this and it's like, it wouldn't sound like what you're doing. But it, I don't, it's just one small, I'm, I'm just nitpicking at that point. It, it's fine. But uh, so yeah, he, he defeats him with a, a classical lick instead of playing blues. So it's like, you should have just listened. Apparently you should have just listened to your guitar professor at Juilliard because he ended up he ended up winning with it because the other guy couldn't even fucking do it and then that's just kind of the end of the film everyone just like cheers they're like all right you want because the guy uh Jack Butler the Steve Vai guy gets kind of pissed off throws his guitar down and just like walks off the stage and it's like all right you won and then the, the film just kind of fades out like that's it is is it the perfect film no it's worth a watch. It's entertaining. Um, is it my go-to? No. Uh, but yeah, it just randomly came to mind the other day. I was thinking about it. <sighs> so it's just kind of one of those, like, doesn't really have a huge cult following. It's just kind of, uh, it is what it is. It's whatever. I love old 80s films. But there's also just not even that many, like, guitar films out there. Or whenever they do, they're probably, like, not that much budget and stuff behind it. Maybe one day there'll be, like, a really kick-ass, like, guitar show or guitar film like this. Or uh, maybe, like, a guitar anime to where it's uh, kind of like Samurai Jack having to defeat all these people. But it could be, like, one guitar player that has to defeat all these, like, other ones. It could be, like, well-known ones and stuff or learn stuff across the way. That would be cool. But, yeah, uh, go check it out, I guess. And thanks. Bye.